Okay, so Alex, I want to jump to the next topic, and that is the Ford Mach-E. All right, so I had a chance to, which by the way, here in South Florida, we have a just an absolute herd of these Mach-E's running around. I got a chance to see one really about two months ago. I was charging at uh, an Electrify America location, and sure enough, two Mach-E's pull up literally while I'm charging. Got a chance to talk to their owners, really kind of got into the inside of their brains. Two owners, two different experiences. So we started kind of looking into a little bit of the research of how ownership was doing, and I'll, I'll reveal some stats here in a minute. But I want to jump to Sandy Monroe. You, you're, he's a, I know he's a friend of your channel. Uh, you've, you've been on with Sandy many times. He broke down two videos. Uh, the first video was his frunk reveal, uh, which really kind of showed the infrastructure of the Ford in terms of its part matrix, all of those aspects. He was not pleased with what he found. What are What is your take after seeing Sandy's review of, of that particular aspect of the Ford Mach-E? Yeah, and once again, I got to give you full disclosure. Sandy is a monthly guest on my channel. I love him to death. I actually got to finally meet him in person the other day. Uh, he's just as cool in person as he is on TV. <laughs> um, uh, I think he's been on my show for now a couple of years. Uh, so now one of the reasons I have him and anybody really on, on my show is because I always try to bring in someone with a different opinion. There's no point right. of having somebody with the same opinion, right? Yeah. And uh, the reason, so we never disagree on something that uh, are very technical because he's way, way smarter than me. And I think he's the number one expert in the field. But we look at things in the two different perspective, right? Of course, his job is to look at things like how is it made, right? How can it be improved? Are you wasting money here? Or are you kind of setting yourself up for a lot of service appointments later when 100 connectors versus 10 connectors decide to break or, or, or go bad, right? Uh, but my uh, perspective is, is from the consumer point of view. And a lot of times consumers don't always necessarily care about what's under the hood uh, yeah. they just want a feature you know or or a look or or um uh, or a label on on the car it's not always you know it's not always um uh, a logical right explanation and i gotta tell you like <laughs> right. for example i'm sure we can talk about our phones where i don't know what the hell is inside is it well-made phone is it not well-made phone i don't know i like it i like a lot of things i like the camera i like you know so uh, you know, Sandy can be right, and actually he is right, uh, about how uh, a lot of these cars can be improved, because obviously this is Ford's first shot at the real electric vehicle, just like for many other electric car manufacturers or manufacturers like Volkswagen, right? Um, there's tons of things to improve, but, you know, like he did not like ID4 at all. And honestly, yeah, I, I, Volkswagen needs to do better, but I still bought one because I like a lot of features and for yeah. everything else, there's a warranty. You know, so it's two different perspectives. Uh, but listen, Ford should listen to Sandy, just like Volkswagen, hire him, hopefully, and improve a lot of things that they uh, can do better uh, with with the next generation. Yeah, I think when I got a chance, because we've been doing a, a lot of deep dives on many of the, you know, the review videos that have been out there from the individual owners, obviously guys like Sandy, there's only a handful of experts, I think, that really have been able to break down and identify hot points, so to speak, uh, especially for EVs, because it is kind of a, new, you know, obviously it's a new architecture entirely in auto, automobile manufacturing. It does change the game for companies like Ford, GM. It's different for a legacy automaker to kind of move in this direction when you think about what's happening over at Tesla, Rivian, you know, the, the pure play uh, electric companies versus what's happening at the legacy guys because they kind of have that built-in you know, mechanism that is in place for manufacturing, which in many cases is just absolutely a parts reservoir of just so much happening inside a vehicle. And when I saw his video, I was like, gosh, this uh, Sandy's right. I mean, this has got ridiculous amount of parts and cables and he was comparing it to the Model 3 and trying to go with that uh, kind of that first principles approach that Elon talks about a lot. Fewer parts, fewer breakage, you know, fewer and of course reduction. And if you can start to centralize part manufacturing, he he went into the whole spiel of when he was working for Ford. So I think that is definitely his big complaint uh, with that. Let's talk further into the battery tech 
because that was another video he did breaking down the technology, the battery pack itself, the sled, so to speak, um, and how Ford went about that type of approach. What were your thoughts on that video? I mean, honestly, I, I would probably gonna give you almost identically the same answer. <laughs> Obviously, the battery if it technology. Works, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yes, if it works, most consumers don't worry about it, right? Like, yeah. just like I said, I don't really know. Like, I have a mic here. I don't know if it's an efficient and good mic and stuff. <laughs> I, it works and it sounds all right, right? So, and and again, listen, this is not just my opinion. I'm I'm kind of just saying that most time, most of the time, consumers. For example, never worry about how efficient their Cadillac is or their Audi is or their Mercedes is, right? Uh, if they're satisfied with features that, that they want, everything else is a moot point. There is a category of people, of course, they want efficient cars, you know, to save money. That's why people buy, you know, smaller cars, you know, cheaper cars and so forth. There's something to it. But majority of the people, I think, don't, don't really care. Again, I can give you myself as an example, uh, in, you know, not everyone this way. You know, ID4 has 250 miles of range. Uh, that's good enough for me, even though I know their battery is not that efficient. They have some work to do, right? Yeah. Um, and again, full disclosure, they're also Volkswagen is one of my uh, channel sponsors. And but that, that won't keep me away, you know, away from actually uh, uh, suggesting they, they have lots of work to do. Uh, but for me, for the price and the range, that was a perfect combination for me. And I think right. for a lot of other people who bought the same car, I think the same goes for Ford, Mustang, Mach-E uh, consumers, and many others. Um, uh, you know, Sandy's uh, opinion should be taken very seriously by the manufacturers, but I think consumers may be a little bit easier on it because as long as they're getting what they want for the price they want, that's under warranty. Um, I think most people will overlook the shortcomings of, of what's inside. I guess I'm just a different kind of consumer because I, you know, we have um, our only ICE vehicle, a BMW, I've been, we've owned BMWs for many years and I continue to buy them, but these BMWs, oh my God, you talk about a parts problem and this is, these are as sophisticated of vehicles as there is out there. Uh, it's an X7, it was one of the first, well, it was the first year they did the X7, but the point of the number of times that we've had to do repairs on it for small part issues, uh, software updates, scenarios like this. This is a vehicle that's been made, when you think about BMW and German engineering, I mean, this is high class engineering at its finest. So I, I always am in concern about the electric vehicle adoption rate, especially with vehicles like the Mach-E. Because if this doesn't win, I mean, this is a Ford, come on, this is the all American Ford company. If this vehicle doesn't just go out and blow it away, I mean, you're, you literally you've got the Mustang badge on it. This is this is an icon. Um, I'm, that's what I'm concerned about. Is is if we start to see this Mach E, you know, for I hope this doesn't happen. But whether we look at battery fires, we look at uh, a high percentage of uh, maintenance and issues with these owners, which have already started showing up. That's my concern. Is that it could dampen the adoption rate for the future of electric vehicles, especially from someone like Ford. I see your point. And, and of course, listen, these cars need to be made well enough, at least to be on the same level as the gas cars, right? Well, if right. all of a sudden they're going to be catching on fires and breaking down all over the place, that's not good. At the same time, you know, they have uh, uh, at least, uh, let's just say at least decent uh, experts and people who've been building these cars for a while, and they do understand what's on the line here. And I have to tell you that I have talked to people who are on the Ford team and Volkswagen team of these electric cars. I've addressed those privately with them. They all understand they have taken a lot of things into consideration. So, you know, they just weren't throwing something really quick here. Um, as a matter of fact, if you know the history of how the um, Mach -E, uh, Mustang Mach-E came about, you know that they were actually just going to make whatever EV. And then they actually ended up putting all of these resources into this car. Um, and uh, now I have to tell you that my experience actually with a uh, Mustang Mach-E has been very different because when, when, uh, when I got one for a week from Ford, I decided to, I'm not going to lie, I, I, I decided to troll a local gas car enthusiast, uh, um, <laughs> uh, you know, gathering. So I pulled up in my Mustang Mach-E and I opened the hood, I put a little V8 juice in there and I, you know, started bragging <laughs> about how awesome my V8 was. And I thought, you know, I'm going to get some hate in here. But I was like, that's yeah. okay. I'm promoting an EV. 
Well, guess what happened? First of all, there was already another Mustang Mach-E there and all these gearheads that brought this, you know, <laughs> you know, just, just muscle cars and gas powered cars. They were like, oh, that's that Mustang Mach-E. Oh, I wanted to see this one really cool. The, 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 I feel like they won hearts of so many people already, the, the people who really should be hating this car that I think they'll be fine. And, and I get it, you know, their, their sales are very well of this car. As a matter of fact, if you try to buy one, you're not just gonna be buying it at, MSR, at MSRP, you're gonna be buying yeah. an MSRP plus another uh, a yeah. markup. Um, so listen, we will know uh, for a while whether this car is gonna be a, a problem in terms of uh, servicing, uh, but we do know that for now, it sounds like it's a big hit. Um, and if, if we go back to Sandy Monroe, maybe the, another thing that I, I, I want to mention is that, you know, uh, you know, each brand has their own issue with stuff, right? Like for example, you know, you know, uh, uh, BMWs have issues with, uh, sometimes the electronics, right? Like a lot right. of, uh, uh, no Tesla has its own things, right? Like for example, you know, Sandy Monroe, his, himself, I believe, and I, I should go back, but I believe he said that Tesla has literally one of the worst paint shops in the world and their Fremont yes, factory. He's, what yes, they have in that. China, what we'll have in the Berlin and, and Texas will be much better. So, you know, paint peels off sometimes with Teslas, but you know, so everyone's got their own thing that they need to improve. So Tesla will hopefully improve their paint shop and Ford and Volkswagen and others will improve their wiring and their battery technology. And that's how we're going to move forward. But the exciting part is, you know, both Ford and Volkswagen and others are for the first time behind their electric cars. You go to their YouTube channels, you go to their Twitter accounts, boom, yeah. it's their electric cars that are, you know, front and center. Um, and I think that's what the exciting thing is. But, you know, of course, they will have issues, especially with the first go around, just like Tesla did, just like everybody sure. will. Uh, yeah. And they'll just have to deal with it and provide good service, hopefully. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you look at, well, and as I said, you know, my concern obviously is once you get a bad taste, you kind of you kind of move away from brands in some cases. Ford being being the iconic brand they are, definitely like your experience there with the Ford, um, you know, gathering in the motor, the club there. Uh, I would see that, yeah, sure, that they're going to give a lot of rope to vehicles until they own one. Once they own one, is a different, I feel like it's a different experience. I want to jump to a consumer sentiment data poll that we did on about 50% of Mach-E Mach owners, at least up to the a little over almost 13,000 uh, cars that were sold. Uh, but the sentiment on this vehicle holding at a 62.13, and we've, we analyzed this from some, you know, a variety of different social media products. 62 is a pretty good sentiment score uh, overall. Whether or not they would refer the vehicle was a 42.11 score, which is a little bit lower, but but still respectable. Brand sentiment was still very high, 70, almost 71, uh, compared to say a Tesla Model 3, overall Model 3 sentiment, which is an 89. We just kind of threw it in there just to show the comparisons here. That in itself still feels like this is a winner to me, at least from the Mach-E standpoint, when you look at the overall sentiment of the vehicle, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have any kind of brand sentiment damage, meaning, oh, gosh, I'll never buy a Ford again based on what I've, you know, my experience with my Mach-E. So with that being the case and with where kind of this market is going, because uh, consumer sentiment is, as you know, I mean, whether it's J.D. Powers or you look at, you know, all the different car sites that really start to break into these and dive into the Mach-E, it hasn't been accepted as well as maybe as some of the other uh, electric vehicles. And I feel, I feel like Ford just needs to have that put out there. Just like you're saying, you've got to be able to solve these problems. It, listen, it is their first vehicle. If I went back and looked at uh, the 2015 Model S, it's a different story. You know, We almost bought one and then did not buy it because we saw a lot of problems with that particular car. So that's, I guess that's my issue with, with that. I want to jump to one last piece here. And that was the consumer satisfaction center. This is where it got a little bit interesting. Satisfied with purchased, uh, this was a 59.63 uh, score, which is soft, but not bad. Would buy again, that was a little bit lower. And then preferring another EV. I was surprised that a lot of these, and these are Ford Mach-E owners, uh, and quality they had at 52. Styling was the big winner here at 70. 0.12, and then their tech was even 
you know, kind of in the same level in terms of quality. So kind of a mid-par uh, response to and from the Mach-E owners that are out there. Is that the way that you look at this vehicle? Would If you looked at those numbers and said, hmm, I really like the styling, tech is a little weak, not my perfect thing. Where do you see the weaknesses in the Mach-E? I think, you know, uh, these surveys are always hard to interpret, right? And there's no surprise that Tesla's brand uh, sentiment is going to be much higher because sure. when you're buying a Tesla, you're buying into this whole universe, yeah. right? Yeah. Where I think when you're buying a Ford Ma uh, Mustang Mach-E or, you know, Volkswagen ID4, you, you're buying a car. Like, I love my ID4, but mm -hmm. I really don't like anything else about Volkswagen because the rest of them are, you know, gas cars and I'm, yeah. I'm not in market for a gas car and I don't even like their styling. So I did not buy into the universe. I just bought into this one particular thing. And I think that's what happens with Ford owners, right? They mm -hmm. bought into this one particular thing. So there's no this amazing thing around it, right? There is no events and Elon Musk and all of that stuff. So there's no surprise there. And, you know, Tesla's created an amazing uh, a universe for their for their brand. Um, as far as you know, um, the the overall satisfaction in those different categories, I think the difference here is also uh, when I'm assuming that a lot of people, and from my experience, a lot of people who are buying this Mustang Mach E's and ID Force, it's it's their first electric vehicle, yeah. right? Um, and a lot of people who have who've been buying Teslas, they're also, again, they see their second or they've already been completely sold. So uh, with, with anything, when you buy something, you know, brand new, you realize that you have to change your life a little bit or sometimes a lot. And I think some of the things that are, people are still kind of feeling the growing pains of just being an electric car owner. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure if you conducted this 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 survey about almost any <laughs> new electric vehicle, you probably would have received very similar answers. Some similar. I have yeah. to say, the numbers look good to me. Um, yeah. It's uh, if if there's anything in particular maybe that's bothering you, I I, I can I, I, all of them make sense, and I see them you know improving over time, not just for Ford, but but for for most of the electric cars out there. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would look at from the the survey data was that it was a little bit softer. Not it wasn't not bad. This was not a bad knock on the on the Mach E at all. In fact, for a first year vehicle, I thought it was actually well a, a good a good showing. Uh, obviously, with what Sandy's saying, that's another scenario with you know kind of the technical aspect of it. But just from the consumer and the ownership experience, which is what you and I often deal with in our own respective vehicles. You know, it's how, you know, because me, I'm, I'm a big proud owner of Tesla. I co constantly show people they're always wanting to look at the Model Y. I want to see inside of it. You know, I'm a big, and the two Mach-E owners that I've had a chance to talk to were exactly that. One that was absolutely sold on the vehicle, would never consider another. And then another that said he wished he bought the Model Y, which, and, you know, because I was sitting there with the Y and he said, he was more interested in my car. I was more interested in, in his car. So I see this as an issue with Ford. They've got to overcome this with um, whatever the challenges may be, whether it's tech, some of the battery scenarios, especially if there's ever any problems with this vehicle because of what Sandy kind of uncovered. I think that's going to be their future. And with the, you know, the lightning coming out very soon, that could be its legacy uh, for Ford of really kind of evolving into a, a true EV company. So I'm very bullish on Ford right now for EVs. So I, I pray that this is one of those that really kind of wins the, the day for sure. I, I, well, okay. So first I hope we can agree that two is not a great sample size. That's and, right. Uh, I, 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 I have to, yeah. So statistically probably, but I have to say that when I meet uh, electric, new electric car owners, I rarely here oh i wish i would have gone with something else i mean sometimes it, yeah. it happens yeah i mean it's almost like getting married right how many how many <laughs> friends do you know they say you know what i wish i was with john's wife you know what i mean like you know you you you, you paid the money for it you did the research but by the time you usually purchase the car or make a big decision in your life um you know you already sat on liking this no matter what because right the money has been paid. You're stuck with a lease or whatever, right? Or a marriage certificate, whatever it might be. You so love it whether you don't. I actually, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So I, I actually have very rarely seen people uh, uh, regret their purchase, whether it's a Tesla or another electric vehicle. I think everybody is just happy to be in an electric vehicle. Yeah. Though some also regret buying it and they go back to a guest car. Sure. Um, yeah. So 
listen, I, 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 my understanding and feedback right now is that it's a huge hit in yeah. terms of sales, in terms of customer satisfaction, uh, and in terms of what, what this first real electric car that they've made uh, for Ford. Uh, I'm rooting for them. Uh, and I don't really see them having issues selling them in the next probably one to two. If you drive one, yeah. I don't know if you've ever driven one. If you drive one, just yeah. the attention that you're getting is probably for a lot <laughs> of people it. worth <laughs> the price that they pay. Yeah. Sure. And I also have to say, listen, I really, really like their um, user interface. Uh, it's it's just excellent. I really so you like, like the, the knob. screen. You like the yes, knob. because actually, yeah, I like the knob. Just like I like the uh, vents that are uh, uh, air conditioning vents that I can adjust uh, yeah. while I'm driving without having to look at the screen. <laughs> um, th don't forget the knob will probably be used for more things than just um, a volume. It will probably be used for air conditioning, fan speed, and other things. From yeah. my internal conversations with Ford, not official. Uh, but, uh, you know, and there is something to be said about not having to take your eyes off the road to sure. adjust things that we need to adjust often. Right. Yeah. And for that, I feel like a physical feel uh, of of a knob or, or air vent is actually does trump the um, the touch uh, interface, which I am a huge fan of. I love touch screens, but some things just need to be old school because of the convenience and safety. And I yeah, thought the they, they actually. Yeah, it does feel a little cheap. I'm not gonna lie. I think they could do a little bit. It needs to feel a little bit heavier. I yeah. feel like, and I'm hope I hope they can fix that. But yeah, I think that's actually quite interesting invention. Well, my invite, uh, my invitation out to Ford right now. I'm officially inviting you guys. We would love to drive one. We have not. We've tried to find one here and so other than owners, which have let me set in them, but we haven't got a chance to really get out and get get in it. Uh, right. And I've noticed I that about the Maki owners. They're a little bit protective of their vehicles. I think you will be, well, that should tell you something, right? But I think you will be impressed uh, when you drive it. Uh, yeah. There are quite a lot of things that are just very done very, very well. They really thought a lot of things through. Uh, again, I, I enjoyed it. That was one of my top two choices, honestly. I was kind of interested between that and the ID4, absolutely. Uh, and I think it just, to me, it didn't even come down to the, to the cars. It came down to the fact that, you know, um, Mustang Maki, the four dealerships have been marketing it a little above my comfort. Like, yeah. you know, like I had to explain to my local Ford dealer what the starting price on a Mustang Maki is because they weren't even aware of what the hell that is because they marked it up by, <laughs> you know, I, I could buy another used car for, for, that, for the markup that they charge. So I think that's what kind of uh, pushed me uh, towards ID4. But I thought they were both excellent cars and I think they're yeah. going to do well. Well, anyway, I, I think it's it, it's this is a winner. It's a, it's one that I'm continuing to look at, but I am a little bit uh, you know skeptical still yet on Ford. I want to see the the lightning come out. And I want to see more of the the Machis on the road. So it's going to be fun to see how Ford evolves because I think they are one of the key manufacturers that could lead us out in terms of the original OEMs uh, into electric vehicle adoption for sure. As a lot of Tesla fans tell me all the time, they're selling every single one they're making. So as soon as they can make enough for them to flood the streets, I'm sure you'll see more of them. Yeah, for sure. Alex, it's always great having you on the show. Thanks so much for stopping in today. We appreciate it. It's always fun. Excellent. All right, you guys are tuning in over on the podcast. Give us some stars here on the YouTube channel. Make sure and subscribe and like this video if you like what we're doing here. Give us some comments below. Uh, we love that input. If you Ford mach -E owners out there, please give us some uh, comments on what your experience has been. I want to see it. And if there's a South Florida Ford mach -E owner out there watching this video, hit me up on Twitter, at Paul Barron. I would love to. I'll let You can drive my Model Y and let me drive your Mach-E. I just want to get in one of these vehicles and really give it a spin. So make sure and stay tuned right here on TechPath. We'll catch you next time.